we're going to talk about something that affects you, Seamilk, a lot more than it affects me. And what is that? Trying to make me look bad? Nope. Just, you know, from experience. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that is a very disgusting issue. And that is food safety. Food safety. So we're going to actually compare the food safety of China versus Vietnam. Correct. Uh, just because we are here in Vietnam and we've <laughs> noticed a lot of parallels and a lot of things that are very different Correct. from China. So let's get into it. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, one of the things I love about traveling is trying out local street food. Right. I love street food. Right. For me, I actually prefer going out and having some kind of side of the road snack of a cart or something than going into a fancy restaurant and trying the local special cuisine. Right. That's me. Why? Well, it's more fun. It's more jovial. You're out there. It's more tasty. A lot of these so-called like uh, special dishes, like you go to in you know, Beijing and you have to go to like a, an expensive Peking duck restaurant or something. Okay. It's actually not nice and it's very expensive and it's a whole posh affair whereas a street food thing you're out there you're drinking beer you know like the night markets in Taiwan. Right. So much fun. Right. And I prefer the taste. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. I'm more of a meal boy myself. I know I know you like to check off the boxes and be like ooh cilantro and uh, water 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 in this dish. Little known fact I usually seek out cilantro, cilantro apparently, do. according to Winston. Anyway, yeah, it's got a <laughs> both, both things, uh, you know, mealtime, whether it's mealtime or street yeah. food, both carry a very high risk in Southeast Asia and East Asia in general, save for Korea and Japan. Yeah, it's probably the only China. two. Yeah, China, right? yeah. China is an East Asian country with a massive issue with food safety. And yes. I'm not just talking about bacteria, I'm also talking about things like uh, scandals. Yeah things like lead and mm -hmm. chemicals and runoff into the water, right? Yeah. All of these things pose a huge threat to the average eater that pops over to China, but also mm -hmm. affects the local Chinese populace. Yeah, and I mean, not just the, the sort of byproducts of industry. So it's right. not like, oh yeah, the vegetables have been grown in, in like a bad piece of land that's got chemicals. Right. There's also a problem with people sort of maliciously using chemicals in food right or to produce certain medicines and things that actually end up affecting people's health right so we to talked, make money it's right. malicious we've talked about things like fake alcohol if there's a profit margin mm. you know china will find a, a lot of chinese people will find a way industrious chinese people will find a way to scam people out of money a lot of the times they, they don't realize what they're doing they're just like oh i can make some money right this right. is just as good we talked yeah. about that beer, a fake beer shop but down the street from our motorcycle shop. The yeah. guys that worked there didn't know they were making fake beer. Yeah, they thought it was legit. And meanwhile, right. they're poisoning people. poisoning people, yeah. Anyway, the whole thing is that in China, if you're in like a third tier city yeah. or lower, you have to worry about sanitary con conditions as well. Because sure. unfortunately, a lot of the restaurants that you see, yes. they're not actually making food for themselves in right. the same place. They're mm. only making it for the customer. So they don't have the same kind of moral code in the way that they prepare things. So I'm talking about things about washing hands. Sure, so sure, um, sure. I'm talking about using, you know, really dirty water to rinse the vegetables. Oh my word, if you look in some of those restaurant kitchens, the yeah. toilet is in the kitchen. Right. You know how many times it's happened? You've got to use the toilet in a rural Chinese restaurant. They're like, yeah, sure, it's in the kitchen. They might as well be washing the, the vegetables in the toilet. I've, I've seen, seen the them washing like the dishes over the and stuff. Toilet. No, in right. the toilet. Oh, in the toilet, right, right. You know those pit toilets. Right, right. Oh yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. It's so that's an, yeah. that's an issue. That's an issue. Another thing is that... I'm sure it happens here too. Yeah, the lack of refrigeration. Oh, uh, yes, a lot of yeah. Chinese people, because of the idea of qi and uh, Chinese medical values, what happens is a lot of the stuff isn't chilled yeah. or refrigerated, so the food will go bad quickly. And of mm -hmm. course, you're going to get sick from that, right? Yeah, yeah. Me personally, I've been sick a lot in China. Yeah. Right? Uh, An I absolute haven't. ton of times I've been sick in China. Um, I really never got sick before I came to China. Right. So that was a that was a big kind of no no. I had to start to learn what which places to trust. Mm. You know which areas I'm gonna. You know what type of food. It better be hot, right? Sure. I gotta be really careful when I'm in China now. Vietnam. Yeah. I'm not gonna paint a rosy picture either. It's sure. quite dirty, and the food safety here is very poor. Right. Uh, from what we've seen, what have we seen? Well, okay. 
We've been spending a lot of time in the beginning of the trip like we are right now in Hanoi. Right. We've been out in the sticks. It's quite a bit different, right? Yeah. Here in Hanoi, you've got a lot of posh restaurants, but it's all catered towards tourists and price. Right. You can see that there's a certain level of quality of the food that's made there. But sure. being a street food guy, you know, like the other night, we were sitting out and I was eating that fermented pork right. nonsense on the side of the road, which looks like they washed it off in the gutter. Right. I'm fine, by the way. Yeah. I didn't die. I probably have parasites, but... Right. Um, <laughs> it was delicious. I really liked it. Right. Uh, but as we're riding out the countryside, ah. just like in southern China, we see the split pork, right. split pigs on the back of motorcycles. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you have to understand... We're going straight, by yeah. the way. You have to understand just how filthy this situation is. You've got a guy on one of these motorbikes. He's got a pig carcass that's already been split in half and all the spleen and everything taken out right it's been cleaned driving down a highway with pollution everywhere trucks barreling past bits of road being thrown up on this pork and he's delivering that to the restaurants it's not very clean it's not refrigerated it's out in the elements it's pretty gross I've seen a lot of people rinsing stuff off in dirty water on yeah. the side of the road um, and the thing is, and this is that, I mean, honestly, the parallels yeah. are almost the same, the, the cleanliness standards here. But the yeah. difference is that the locals are eating that same stuff. Right, right. So they're not affected. They're, they're not going to be affected by bacteria, yeah. right? E. coli, things that are actually going to affect a, a tourist. Sure. They're used to it. Their bodies are immune to this kind of stuff. Right, right, right. So the downfall of the Chinese food safety and food quality thing we're talking about is that there's other factors that do affect the locals. Yes. Right. Yes, so yes, it's yes. it's dirty here, but Vietnamese people in general are quite disappointed about China in the way that they kind of scam their own people. Right? I think it's it's the malicious side of it. Right. I don't think you find that. Maybe it's because Vietnam hasn't reached that level of industrialization maybe. Yeah. or whatever it is. But you don't find the same sort of people figuring out. Oh, we can make this thing fake. We right, can put right. this this in our food to make right. it uh, seem fresh but right. meanwhile it's actually rotten and off you know that kind right. of thing we don't, they don't like dye their eggs and stuff right, right. you know with right. chemical industrial dyes right like they do to make those duck egg yolks look more yellow or right right you know that kind of stuff so i think it's the lack of the maliciousness here which makes it safer yeah the malicious kind of like make money thing right you know the thing is though both you and i we have had really really good experiences when we go into rural china yes when you get away from the cities where you have this kind of greedy industrial money grab going on. Like remember when we were in Jiangxi? Yeah. You know the place where the, the old grandpa was uh, <laughs> right. you know, playing with the drone? Right. That place? That was awesome. Those people were wonderful. They grew all their stuff in the backyard and yep. you know, they, the food was fresh and great. But then there was a factory right there, right? Like above their farm where they're growing everything, and it's. So they're being as careful as they could be in that situation. Yeah, but what can you do? You can't do anything, right? Yeah, but I mean, that, the thing is, once again, it, it's all down to the greed in the cities that's yeah. really messing things up. Right. Yeah. What else can we say about it, though? I, what else, what about your experiences some, here? I was gonna give some tips. Okay. So what's bothered me in the past is when I accidentally get something where it has the water in it. That's usually what really messes me up. The water. So you have things like ice, yes. you know, that's from the tap here. The, the pipes are not treated here. No. There's The groundwater is absolutely chock full of bacteria. It's really going to mess you up. And you don't have that immunity if you come from the West. No. Um, so avoid things that have any sign of water from the tap. Well, on. yeah. For example, last night, we were sitting at that place where I was eating that fermented pork soap. Right. They brought out warm beers. Right. And we're like, no, we can't have warm beers. They're like, okay, well then we'll give you some ice. Mm. So then they gave us ice for the beers. Right. Where's that ice coming from? It's a very cheap side of the road stall. They're not going to go and spend money on bottled water and no. get you like Evian water <laughs> no. and make ice cubes. No. They're gonna go take tap water and they're gonna make right. it. Right. And this is common in China as well because ice is not a thing they don't understand. And right. I actually, I knew a guy in China who thought that freezing water killed bacteria. You know, like how boiling water does. He thought it was the same. Whoops. Yeah, actually it pre preserves them. But, uh, so yes, watch out for ice. Yeah. That's a big, big tip. Right. You know, the thing is, man, it never affects me. Right. I'm happy. I love going and getting all this stuff. But I do at the same time know that if you and I 
yeah. went and got a test. I mean, personal personal anecdotal evidence for you, you're lucky. Right? Yeah, I'm lucky. But a lot of people like me, you know, suffer from this stuff. And I yeah. would say you really, really got to avoid raw things, uncooked yes. Oh, things. Yes. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Make sure stuff is hot and properly cooked and you'll probably be okay, right? But the water is the big Dude, one. Dude, like you, you say that and it's absolutely true because most of my friends that I hung out with in China that came from England or America, they would always get sick, right. always, right. bar none. Right. We'd all go eat at the same places. Yeah. We'd go have street barbecue and they'd be complaining about like bloody diarrhea and things like that. And it I'd be happens. like, what are you guys talking about, man? It's fine. <laughs> You know, so I think there's something to be said that if you've grown up in the developed world where everything's right. sterilized and FDA approved and all that, you just don't have that built-in immunity. Right, right. You know what I mean? I would agree with that. Yeah. Anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that episode. Sure. I understand that it's probably something that unless you go to, you know, developing countries, you're not going to have to deal with, but it's definitely if you ever decide to make that move or have an adventure, you got to really be careful about that kind of stuff because it can really ruin your trip. It can. I actually, uh, I'd like to add a little something else here. Sure. Quick recommendation, food here in mm. Vietnam is fantastic. If you're a Westerner coming here, you've got to try the banh mi. Yeah. That's my favorite so far. Yeah. And the bun cha is bun really cha good, is too. good too. We actually have a, a, a Episode, video about yeah. that, so you could go check it out. But yes, absolutely, try the banh mi, I love it. Spring rolls too, Yeah, it's good stuff. Cool. Anyway, uh, anything you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off? Down in the comment section, please tell me your worst food poisoning event. I want to hear about it. Maybe someone can learn from your uh, situation as well. Every country is different, right? Sure. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a like if you like the video. And what do you have to say? I would like to say that whether or not you're an adventurous eater, mm. we love you all the same. Yeah. Or if you're a very safe eater. Either way, stay safe out there, guys. Have fun. Experience new things. And don't let the chance that something might be a little dodgy stop you from trying it. Agreed. Just be smart. Yes. And uh, you know the drill, as always, stay awesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And don't forget, we have a new schedule, which means a new ADV China video every single Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Not only that, you can check out a Lao 86 video at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. And don't forget, Friday, just before the weekend, time to crack open a beer. You can watch a Serpent's at A video, also 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So don't forget, every week you get three videos from us.